Let us just bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we just come thanking you Thank in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just ask God that you will move in the midst even right now, God, and that you will begin to touch every ear on tonight, God, that you will begin to touch every heart on tonight, begin to touch every mind, oh God, that they may receive the word of God with gladness, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, let them know you like they have never known you before, God, in the name of Jesus, God. If there's any soul that need to be saved, God, begin to prick at their heart even right now, God, that they may know your voice, for your words that my sheep for hearing my voice and no other voice where they know. And we ask all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Standing verse 3 through 15, he said, yes, there will be trials. He said, I have been tested, but he wants you to see his faithfulness in the ministry and to encourage you to endure for Christ's sake. Amen. For Christ's sake, we must endure. We always want to know God in a fellowship, right? Of knowing him. But what about the fellowship of his suffering? We must also know Christ in the fellowship of his suffering. Or we won't really know the power that is in us. Jesus said that, yes, I do great works. But greater works than you shall do. Because I go to the Father. So if he can endure in Gethsemane. You can endure in your wilderness. Amen. And I am reading from the English Standard Version. So that you can understand me a little better. As Paul is speaking to the Church of Corinth. And we are no different from the Church of Corinth. Church of Corinth had many problems. How many of us are problem free? I would like to talk to you on tonight. Because even though I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, there is still a devil loose. But I know that great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. 11. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us. But you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak to children. Widen your hearts also. If you are being burdened down today, it's not because of me. It's not because of First Baptist. It's not because of Reverend Burton. It's because of your own circumstances that you need to come up from. How did you get underneath your circumstances? That's the question God wants to know when he said that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened you on tonight. Come on, y'all. We serve a living God. We tired of preaching a weak Jesus. Jesus said, oh, death, where's your, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? We have the power on tonight. We just need to let the enemy know you cannot overtake me. For I'm going to run this race. It's not to the swift. But the Bible declares it to those who endure to the end. If you are an overcomer, you are an endurer, you should be, be glad you faithful to be here on tonight. Amen. There's great words that he has for you. He loves you on tonight and he would never leave you nor forsake you. And down to verse 14. And it, it, it's very important that you listen to me because this is where we're going to get into the three commandments of God and we're going to get into the three promises and we're going to talk about the temple of the living God. Paul says in verse 14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Bilal? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Amen. We are the temple of the living God. For God said, I will make my dwelling among them. I will walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. We got to understand that, yes, back in the Bible days, God was in the temple. But right now we are his temple. Amen. Amen. The temple is the most holy place of God. So Jesus came to replace the temple. Amen. Amen. When he came, the veil was torn in two. We can go to God for ourselves. We ain't got to go to the priest. We can go to God for ourselves. We must know that the veil has been torn in two. Amen. Amen. God says, he says, therefore, go out from their midst. That's the first commandment. Two, and be separate from them, say the Lord. That's your second command. And touch no unclean thing. That's the third command. Yeah, I know that some of you in here with your cigarettes, but baby, you know that it's time for your deliverance. If you have a crack pipe on the outside, it's time for your deliverance. If you have a, bo a, a bottle of alcohol stored up in the bushes outside, it's time for your deliverance. You cannot get the promises of God 
unless you obey his commandments. Jesus said, I have not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. So that tells me we can do all things through Christ. We can fulfill these three commandments of God through Jesus. And he said, if you do these three commandments, he said, one, then I will welcome you. Who wants Jesus to say, I welcome you when we make it into heaven? Raise your hand if you want him to say, I welcome you. Two, he said, and I will be your father. The devil is the only one that is fatherless. The devil is a bastard. He does not have a father. He is only the father of all lies, declares the Bible. The devil don't have a father, therefore you need God to be your father. And the third, he said, and you shall be sons and daughters to me. So therefore, we must follow the three commandments of God so that we can receive the three blessings of God. And I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. In Jesus' name.